morning, Yat Ebene. It's good to be with you this morning on this January 12th COVID-19 Town Hall update. As we always meet together every Tuesday morning, 10 a.m. and every Thursday, uh, 10 a.m. Uh, as of late. You know, we used to meet at 6 p.m. as well, but uh, we do have the great need to um, have our health professionals uh, give us the vital data and uh, inf latest information. So, uh, as you know, it's, it's good to have them on as we do. Uh, this is no different today, uh, with, but with all of the, um, the surging going on, uh, we'll hear our numbers from our various uh, health professionals, but also um, uh, the vaccines they're happening in and around the Navajo Nation. So we're looking forward to receiving the latest updates. So but without, uh, uh, you know, too much uh, more uh, delay, let's all open up in prayer this morning as we always do. So we appreciate you all for joining us on this Town Hall Facebook Live update. Uh, yeah, at the end, God, we thank you, Lord, that, that you awoken us, Lord, with um, another day of life, for you breathe the breath of life into us, Lord. Father, uh, we also come and, and pray for those that are, are struggling, Lord, right now. We pray for uh, healing. We pray for um, calm and, um, Lord, strength, Father, to pull through in this hardship, in this health pandemic, Lord, which you knew about before. So, Father, we dwell on you and your word and your provision, Father. We thank you, Lord, that our health professionals are with us today. Lord, I pray you protection. Uh, you protect them, Lord. Um, each one, uh, many travel to and fro, so be with them in their coming and in their going. We pray for wisdom, Lord, in the spirit of unity, Lord, and uh, collaboration, Father, that we may bless the people across the land with information and data, Lord, that they may run with it and be blessed and be stronger. So, Lord, we pray for the nation, the Navajo Nation, and the United States and the world, Lord, Father. There are those that are pressing in, Lord, looking for you while you may be found. So we thank you again, Creator God, Yahat Dian God. We give you great praise this morning. Thank you for another day in which to be about advancing, Lord, the uh, um, the welfare of our great Navajo Nation, a nation blessed of God. So we thank you again. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Yeah, well, um, so this morning uh, we do have a... a, a, a a whole cohort of, of, of um, worthy individuals, uh, trained, highly trained um, health professionals. So we look forward to hearing from them. So well, without further ado, let's uh, chime in with our president, Jonathan Nez, here this morning as he's ready to give us uh, some updates and then head out to uh, a vaccine staging area in Peru, New Mexico. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the president of the Navajo Nation, Jonathan Nez. Take it away, sir. Oh, uh, thank you, uh, Vice President Lazar, and I thank you for the prayer. He is not with us. So, oh, here, then he did need all this, and then he not get all of it. So, now I know how to deal with the Nigi here, Asian bear, and he did all this, or not so, and e deni katole a a a kuitchi a kon zu dil zen anils ko den nit leni a ro leni hinat anishi do patso dil zen ota washington has ajdo kon le hadas zo gonat anils so hadas zo und a ro ni do khanas na ba ga ni te a a ro kodo bananish e padelia Joba got need to do ya dini a need. So Ishido she had a yard at a bidi needle less. She a need not any the dazzling. So she a Nihik any hidden a con bananish naso a bar got need to edo by she needs a kodo not any. Nakadas Lay, Tratnas, Nodo, the Ben and Abesh, the Nalk Lushi, the Okea, he get a days ingi, a dark Ajido, a Nat Ani, he get a days ingi, Edo here, a doyat eh, than he did needle the DJ Yaqua, a Nakijido, Dijin, that national, but ah, and Dailly, 
sad ado hanet hi che kun daily ti de kosin tsagi na hast eight at da na hnigi jo e ban da hui jne e kodo ni hi che as chane daily in daily in ko kon da anshigi jo ko e ya ani do tsala sa na kha tazli se bitos se dashin e ya ko tsala نخالتين لاتلا دازني إشي كدهي نخان دالنش إدو يات إدو كيه دبدي ميدو لح هدا شك إدو شدنا سو كل سو شيء يا هن نيجي كنا دلنا دالنش تو دي إذا بعض لنجي يا بتسا دي تقصن صاعي بتسا إذا هاد نو هدا صاد إليا Tapi dorot abis je nak ni dia dor leh, sekarang dia kut a esok je, as jenah nana liya, tu nak aje aku sadgi eh ya kau as mal, kut a dini ji dor leh, aku ti az bahaz lagi ya, az betul ah ti tu kosin sekarang dia hasta itu ada, kan lego az zel ini das nala ya aje زل این بان لنجی کدیچه ای یا کن نهیک ای نه یاد ات هستخد دین دو با اشل دو بالله انداخ انداخیگی ای یا کن با آداد اکه دین لی واشین دونه ز یچه کدال یاگی یا دولادا ای بنی نادی کن نه مسان نه چین نه نل ای اقتصاد ولش جو ای کن نسلیگی ای یا بذار بذار هندک خدا کن و نخال شند به نانشی دیل ایا تو بذیست تو بچین به هست ایگی های ریسک پیشیت دیل نیگی یا ای دو اقتصاد بعد دو اقتصاد دی نو هت آ نال سوسیگی ناس کدیل یا آخه دی نال سوسیگی ای واشنگتن ده آخه آ Ada tu sih, tapi kita di sekolah ini harus jauh jauh le, kita zaman ni lego, aku tak aya yang dapat, oh, nanti sos ye lah dah asli, ni kita aku tak ada le tadi ni, so aib ni na aku, ni kita ni hidup nak ada pada atse, di tu kosong sekali zat, ah, hati sih ni dia, so aib ni kita harus jauh le, tu ni kita ada kita logo aib zat ini. Das nelligi, so a zel in cha das inigi, e bicha hada das hadas ne. A e a de shi e nalt sos na cha hadet, e he gi e a de gi cha das in a shwane. Sa e ya an le na an zho zhe de, la le tkun nes de zhe da, ke de hat ee go ya. Le na an zho zhe go de shal, o a un le, نات آنی نیست خوکده شاد آره زل انسانیگی آره شاد و تصفت داده نیگی آشخانی چه با اینش که آ آره زل ان چداس اینگی ای کم بچه تا هست نه دو آره دا آنا داده و تص آشخانیش که اینو سینی بنی نگی ای دو لازه هلند ای تا ای کم سا یه چه کدالیا اینی دانا دونا که چیه دان سا زن هیچ کنان نلیا، سعی بینی نه آت خیلی لگو، ای کن آن هیچ اینی هن نه نی مسانی هیچ این نه لب تی اسپت این ده هست ایگی ای سه دلیل است دی نی، سعی شی با ده ات سه دلیل است دی دی آت ما لهگی، سعی اون هیچ پیام زند دلیل، دو خدا دا بسون دیواشی دنده بسون هیچ چرت آن یا، ای شی سعی کن هیچ اینی هن نه بچه کدال نه دلیل. کدای یا نخن دال نشیگی تبدی نیلیا توی آت پسون نیک اینی نبج کدال نیسته ازت تکویده نیست آه بج کدال نیست آرون نان آرون نان دال نیست از خوگو از خوگوشی آسان آن دز دشی داد از خودال نیست بنی نگی چه دی تکوسن تغی نس نیگی یا آس خو کم پس و بچه کل یاگو لی نویابه ها گنده او خدیه دل لش 
ولكن ولكن you know, uh, transitioning to English, we want to uh, give you the updates. Go ahead and put that on the, um, uh, the, the, the slide or up on the screen. Uh, 871 of our Navajo people have uh, lost their lives to COVID-19. There's no new deaths reported since yesterday, but 871 is a, a real high number. You know, I, I've been doing many funeral meetings on Facebook and Zoom and uh, WebEx, comforting and our condolences go out to our Navajo people. And some families have more than one, more than two, more than three people who are passed from COVID-19. And I was saying in, in Navajo earlier that it's upon us, each and every one of us, not on the government, not on the police, if we just understand for ourselves the priority, and many have done that. Many of our elders are at home. It's just others that don't take this virus seriously. 
And what's happening off the Navajo Nation in Washington, D.C., and the state capitals? We don't want that to happen here on our nation. And so we ask you to come together as one, just as our ancestors came together as one, to fight the enemy. The enemy is not the president of the Navajo Nation, the president of the USA, the, pres uh, the council, the lawmakers. The enemy here is coronavirus. Let's refocus in 2021 on the real enemy that's here before us. And we pray and continue to lift up our people. Positive messaging of our Navajo people. Today we got uh, IHS on the town hall. We have Captain Brian Johnson, uh, Dr. Uh, Christensen, Dr. Va, and then we're gonna also have Dr. Joe Jim uh, giving us an update, and we're gonna have Dr. Hammond. I know some folks out there have questions on the vaccine. Dr. Hammond from John Hopkins will Give us an overview. And of course, we have Dr. Fowler, our, our very own uh, division director that's going to help with the interpretation, and then she'll close out the town hall. Uh, and then we'll come back again Thursday at 10 a.m., not 6 p.m. on Thursday. I noticed that when we have it in the evening, the participation is not much. So we're going to bring the, the Thursday back to 10 a.m. Um, if you go to the next slide, it shows you a progression. This is what Dr. Val will show you. Uh, a more, probably a more in-depth uh, presentation. But you can see throughout the entire uh, pandemic, or at least from uh, September 1st to today, you know, you have the shelter in place order that was established that helped bring the numbers down. We were going on an upward trend. And we had to do the lockdown once again. And those of you that say lockdowns don't work, look at the data. It's right there in front of you. Because of the lockdown, the numbers began to come back down and flatten out through Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. You can see that downward trend. But it's too early to evaluate the impact of Christmas. I think we're getting the tail end of the Christmas holiday, but we don't have the New Year's Eve and the New Year's Day numbers yet. But we're hopeful that everybody prepared well. I'm praying that everybody listen so that these numbers don't increase. The next slide shows you again the comparison. Uh, I like for you to focus on this slide. You know, early on, I, I, I requested this slide. The next slide. Uh, I wanted the Navajo people to recognize that by doing these protocols, you keep these numbers down. And the dark colored one, no, no, go back. The dark colored one uh, is the US numbers. You can see. Two, two humps and then uh, one third big hump, which are the uh, uh, waves in this country. And as you can see towards the right hand top, right hand side corner, you can see the numbers were starting to go down and then the Christmas, the, the Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's travel throughout this country, you saw them traveling, you know, airports and all that, and you see that big spike again, right? Now the brown one, the brown colored line is the Navajo Nation. Yes, we got hit hard in uh, late uh, April, early May. You can see that downward trend because of these lockdowns. But because of the Labor Day weekend numbers, we never caught back up, and you can see that big rise in November. 
but you can see the downward, the flattening of the curve, the downward trend. But this doesn't mean that you should stop what you're doing, ladies and gentlemen. This means that you're doing uh, a, a great job of listening to the doctors and the nurses, the healthcare professionals, Dr. Jill Jim and her team on these public health emergency orders is coming down. But again, we don't see the, uh, the numbers for Christmas, all of the Christmas numbers or all of the uh, um, New Year's numbers. And the, the next one here is, shows you uh, where we're at with the surrounding four states. Uh, right now, Arizona is number two, New Jersey is number one. That first red line on the top, that's Arizona. The second one down is Utah. The yellow one is the Navajo Nation. The third red line down is New Mexico. And the fourth red line down towards the bottom is Colorado. So there are high numbers all around us, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So let's be careful when we travel. And those that are living in those states that want to come home, please limit. Limit your visit. Maybe if you want to drop off food and supplies or firewood, just do that and, you know, that's it. Take full precautions. I'm not encouraging family gatherings or social gatherings, but I know there are some that need to help their elders. You can drop the wood off and just say, uh, thank you, love you to grandma, grandpa, mom and dad, our family members from a far distance. Let's not put them into, even though we may feel healthy, you never know. You may be the carrier of COVID-19. And so the new numbers show the tail end of the Christmas numbers is still uh, coming in, the New Year's numbers still coming in. Now, for the stimulus payments, we've seen a tremendous flow of off-reservation travel these past couple of weeks because of the stimu federal stimulus payments that came in. We need to help each other here, ladies and gentlemen. Well, there is a lot of reports of border towns, just a lot of traffic. And I hate to uh, see, I, don't, I hope we don't see an increase in cases because of the stimulus. And that, that also comes to the next uh, item I like to bring out is the Navajo stimulus. That's going to be going out next week. And so the Office of the Controller are going to be doing them in, in waves, if you want to call it, or, or batches. So not everybody that was supposed to get a Navajo Nation CARES Act hardship assistant check will not get it all at once so that you don't see a big migration of Navajo people leaving the nation or at our circle markets here on Navajo too. So just be aware of that. We, we love you, we care for you. This, that's why we're doing these protocols. And I know they're pretty strict at times. But we are a sovereign nation, and we have the ability to govern ourselves, and that's what we're doing, utilizing the expertise all around us to make these decisions. And I know majority, super majority of our Navajo people are following it. Like I said, I think 80%. It's the 20% that we see on the roads and we take pictures of, and we think that everybody's not following these protocols, but the supermajority are. And I want to say thank you to those Navajo citizens who've done that. Those that 20%, you know, we can learn from this. We made a mistake. Let's rededicate ourselves into following these protocols, please. So the Office of the Controller is planning these hardship check payments in, in uh, batches to, to avoid crowds here on Navajo and all across the nation, and off the nation as well. So lastly, I think uh, the last slide, 
is the, well, I'm going to transition into the vaccination priorities. Um, this is from CDC and Department of Health and Human Services from the federal government. We're abiding by those stages or those phases, phases 1A, 1B, and 1C. So phase 1A, healthcare personnel, long-term care facilities, much of those have been taken care of. And, and I said this last time, please, healthcare personnel, don't spread misinformation. Some of our healthcare personnel at the onset when these vaccines came declined to get a shot. And now that there's a limited number of vaccines, they're, they're, some of them are changing their minds and saying, well, I was never offered a shot. Don't say that if you were offered it in the first place. I understand you want to you get a shot, but just don't spread misinformation. You will receive the shot. But it doesn't look good to our healthcare professionals and especially our federal government when you see comments or posts saying, I'm not getting it when you were offered it in the first place. We're in phase 1B where the high risk patients, our CHRs, our PHNs are going out to a lot of, some of our rural uh, high risk patients and giving them shots over there. We're, we're using Moderna mostly for those because they're not, they don't need to be in the high uh, cold temperature storage, the Moderna. And some of the high risk patients are going to the healthcare facilities to get vaccinated. The other are older patients, 65 years and older. They're getting vaccinated uh, this week where there's a vaccination blitz. I'll be headed to uh, Thoreau in a bit to give you an update. Uh, adults in congregated settings, first responders, spiritual leaders, that's our medicine men, our uh, pastors, our road men, uh, frontline essential workers, and then we'll get into the essential infrastructure and essential businesses. There's not a lot of vaccines, but what we're wanting to do, ladies and gentlemen, is to make sure what we get in we put in the arms of our Navajo people. And um, that's going to be our focus. And, and the team is doing an outstanding job. Indian Health Services, uh, the Health Command Operations Center, Department of Health, the 638 facilities, they're doing a great job. Uh, overall, we have received 18, I'm sorry, 26,000, over 26,000 doses to the Navajo Nation. 26,000. We just received some yesterday. That's also included in the 26,000. Uh, and those are going to go out. And those doses that have come in, that have been put into the arms of our, our citizens here, 18,000. Over 18,000 people have gotten uh, a shot. And this also includes the second dose because we're at the second dose now. And we'll break that down to see who really has received the very uh, first vaccination, including both first and second shots. So 68% of what we received from the federal government have gone into the arms of our uh, people here on the Navajo Nation, 68%. And you look at the nationwide percentage, some of them 20%, 30%, and, and they're still being stored. Here on Navajo, 68%. We were, before the shipment came in yesterday, we were over 73%. And so, these uh, individuals are doing an outstanding job in getting this. I know there's not enough, but as I, we as leaders, as long as they're getting into the arms, uh, we'll continue to advocate for more doses to come in. Because it's hard to advocate if you have all these doses sitting in the freezers, right? But 68% have gone out, uh, have been given to our people.
That's a, that's a big percentage. And so we're going to continue to advocate for more uh, vaccines to the, to the Fulton Navajo people so we can continue to go down the priority list. So I wanted to give you that update, ladies and gentlemen. I know I, I take, took, took up some time, but uh, take care of yourselves, please. The vaccine is here, yes. People are getting vaccinated. Even the people that are getting vaccinated, we still got to wear a mask. We still got to follow these protocols. And we got to still follow the experts' recommendations, please. Let us work together. Let's unify as one here on the Navajo Nation. You know what's happening in other places, in Washington, D.C., you know, maybe a little bit disheartening or, or discouraging. But here on the Navajo Nation, you all are doing an outstanding job following our public health professionals' recommendations. So I thank you so much. And we'll continue to pray for our Navajo people and those that have lost loved ones into the future. So God bless you. God bless our great Navajo Nation. And I'm going to turn the time over to our Vice President, uh, Mr. Myron Leiser. Vice President. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, thank you for those uh, information. Uh, all good, as it is always good uh, to hear from our leaders. And um, thank you for your time and your leadership, sir. Appreciate it. Be safe on your travel out to the uh, God bless you. Um, thank you. Um, Yate O Vice President Liza here, Comanche Mishle, Tol Hanu, Bashis Chin Do Comanche Dashiche, Kashti Dashanel. It's good to be with you here on this uh, January 12th COVID 19 Town Hall update. Uh, it's, it's a good time to be able to uh, speak with you this morning. Um, real quick, as we have a whole uh, um, slate of uh, presenters here, uh, as we always do. Uh, but real quick, uh, some numbers uh, just try to differ a, a little bit, not to be redundant uh, from some of the things that President and uh, pretty much don't want to steal the thunder uh, and the data and ideas, I guess, of uh, our presenters here as well. Um, but uh, real quick, uh, just something that I, I think most of us, you know, uh, the, the data and information is out there, but to hear it and to be able to see it here uh, on this uh, town hall uh, live up. Uh, feed here on Facebook is is good for uh, a lot of you that are watching. So Arizona, real quick, 2,000, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Arizona, the total positive cases here uh, for Arizona, uh, real quick, 6,227,000, 600,000, oh boy, this is uh, struggling early on, please forgive me, um, 627,541 total positive cases. As of yesterday, uh, with uh, 10,147 total uh, who have passed, uh, succumbed to this virus. Uh, we still see surging going on uh, out abroad in the state of Arizona with 8,995 new cases. The, these are new, new cases with six new deaths to report. Uh, we also uh, break it down a little bit more, uh, uh, diving into those numbers, uh, Apache County, uh, 8,309 total positive cases since uh, March with uh, 259 total deaths uh, with um, no new deaths to report. So that is good. Navajo County, 12,675, uh, 372 total deaths and uh, no new deaths to report. So that's a positive thing. Coconino County, 12,996 po total positive cases with 233 um, total deaths, um, no new deaths to report. So praise God, uh, hopefully we're seeing a trend here. Uh, New Mexico, 157,087 total cases statewide with 2,764 total deaths since uh, March, early on in this pandemic, uh, 15 new deaths to report. Uh, San Juan County, uh, drilling down into the county level, uh, 11,576 total cases to report. Um, uh, total deaths at this point is uh, unknown, but 69 new cases and uh, no new, new deaths to report. Uh, Gallup McKinley County, 10,569 total positive cases. 
uh, with 40 new cases to report. Um, Utah, our northern neighbors, 307,483 3, total cases with um, 1,396 total deaths. Uh, there are 1,484 new cases to report with four new deaths. Uh, drilling down into north southeastern uh, county, uh, which is not Utah Navajo, uh, 1,548 total positive cases with 35 total deaths, with eight new cases and no new deaths to report. So um, we appreciate that. Uh, and within our own uh, Utah Navajo Health System, I'm, I'm seeing uh, 937 positive cases. So we appreciate that. So as our president gave you the numbers here for the Navajo Nation, uh, we are um, yeah, still uh, under uh, high numbers surge, uh, uh, you know, still uh, advocating for our people to be safe while uh, we are out and about masks, uh, social distancing, traveling limited to one person and a limited capacity in those essential businesses that are open. Um, in our economic recovery, I heard President talk about that and that certainly uh, uh, we're hopeful. We're hopeful that we can uh, open up. And uh, in fact, uh, our office is uh, advocating for that to open up. Uh, as you know, right now we are, our essential businesses are open 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday with a 57 hour weekend curfew where no businesses are open. And yet we still see great numbers of our people out traveling. Um, he mentioned the stimulus. Uh, many have received their stimulus. Some will be are, and are still receiving their checks if they don't have uh, automatic deposits. Our people are traveling uh, now with uh, financial resources in their bank account and in their purses. So, uh, and then there was the first of the month, uh, the uh, uh, GA checks came out and uh, social security, uh, retirement, uh, pension checks all came out. And so uh, we see a, a, a perfect storm for uh, throughout January and February. And then it'll start again in March and April when people start receiving their uh, um, income tax. So uh, we're really mindful of this. And uh, because, you know, 10 months in, I think our people all across the Navajo Nation, we know uh, kind of how to, to move and, you know, be safe. Uh, we are consumers. It's just that we're consuming elsewhere. Um, many of our people travel to, um, you know, great distances to obtain the essentials uh, because we don't have a ready stock here on the Navajo Nation. You know, we have our people traveling to the likes of Albuquerque and Phoenix and Flagstaff, Page, Winslow Gallup, and Farmington for lumber and building supplies, and hay and feed. And while they're there, um, other needed essentials, food, and uh, clothing and, and uh, you know, uh, errands, paying bills, uh, car repairs, and, and the like. like. And so we potentially go to these uh, surging areas and uh, potentially uh, uh, contract the virus and take it home to our families. And so uh, we see the real strong need to uh, open up our businesses and all of them strongly to add, oh, have all of our businesses open one day, uh, seven days a week through Sunday, Monday through Sunday, and then, you know, another week starts. But uh, it's been said maybe 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. all across the board for those businesses. Uh, many are struggling. Many businesses and business owners are, are close to, to shuttering their business. And that's not good. It's not good for any economy. And I, and I understand the need to weigh the, uh, the life, the lives potentially, and, and retaining a, an economy. So again, back to we are consumers. We're just consuming elsewhere. Let's, let's open up our uh, uh, own businesses here in Navajo and even those non-essentials that have been closed since early since pandemic hit. And I, I, I see uh, that those uh, uh, measures, those health protocols uh, were needed and were useful. And I believe we did save many, many, many lives. Ten months into this, I believe that our people have uh, uh, have done their diligence, uh, have have masked up, have um, taken uh, all of these measures and uh, made them their own, and have 
develop great habits. And, uh, you know, again, they uh, are going out to border towns, are shopping locally. Uh, we appreciate those. The buy Navajo, buy local becomes even more important in this pandemic here. And so, uh, again, uh, you know, advocating for the next uh, public health order to come out that uh, our businesses be open um, seven days a week. Again, to, to curtail those with financial uh, resources in their pocket now to, to retain that, to stay here on Navajo. We don't want people uh, traveling in, in mass exodus out to the, again, these, these potential hot zones and potentially, uh, you know, attracting, uh, contracting the virus. And so ours is one where we believe we can open up and recover safely. 10 months into this, I believe there is diminishing returns on these uh, these um, measures that we have, the health protocols that we have. Uh, businesses have been open for a lot of, a long time during the summer and, and up to now. Uh, we need to uh, uh, come alongside those that uh, have, have closed business. And some, uh, you know, as, as, as need shows, as needs uh, are, are fulfilled, they travel to these locales where they're allowed to operate and to uh, make money. And again, you know, it's very innocent at that to make ends meet, pay their bills, save their their uh, vehicles and their homes, and uh, the make repairs and um, pay for college tuition for their children. So, yeah, again, we are all in this together. And as we um, advocate again for opening up the Navajo Nation, our economy is one that is resilient, just like its people. We have our prayers. We have our culture, we have our way of life teachings, we have uh, our songs and our stories, and that we have become the better for it. And for those of us who have maybe been indifferent, because we all do, right? We're just, we're just living and, and we're struggling at that in this pandemic. But to for it. The Bible says that, uh, you know, trial and tribulation, when they are brought upon us, that they produce perseverance, they produce resilience. They produce a deeper faith, which is where I believe a lot of us are. And so as we pray that God would rid our lands of this virus, that we could come and join him in that work and that we would take up the plight of those. Though we, The Bible says that uh, to uh, consider the widow and the orphan, we do a good thing. And so uh, the, the golden rule to do unto others as you would have them do unto you, to take up somebody else's burden and their cares. And we kind of forget about our own problems in that principle. And so early on, President, we challenged our nation, our, the people all across the Nata to uh, become better sons and daughters, to become better parents, grandparents, uncles, aunties, to become better readers of scripture, to, better, to become better readers, period, to study more, to pray harder and longer, to work out, to mind our diets, to become healthier, to walk, to run, to become stronger. You see, our elders have proven to us the resilience of our people, which is in our blood resilience of our present uh, population now. And though some have fallen, those, though some have succumbed, our prayers are with them. We mourn with them. But we look forward to the future to become stronger people guided by our Creator and His ways, His loving ways, to be strengthened and emboldened by a character so rich that we can uh, overlook the the, the um, the, the shortcomings of our friends and neighbors and to become better citizens and to make our cities greater, to make our let homeland greater and to arrive at an increased state economically. We are still pursuing that. And so the Nez Lives administration was uh, brought into this present time. Our creator knew. We sometimes look at ourselves and we say, who would have thought that we would be a part of the leaders, the president and vice president during this time? And we have 24 of our Navajo Nation um, council members here. We would all be here. And so we have worked feverishly. We have worked hard, long hours. We have toiled. We have met on WebEx and Zoom phone calls. And we have been about the, the nation's business for the people's uh, benefit. We are not perfect people. 
We each have our own upbringings. We each have our own holdings. We are Democrats and we are all born in our Creator's image to bring Him glory. And so in this pandemic, uh, uh, I want to leave with you just that, that we would for it and not place blame, not look back as we all have, again, our, our own opinions and we all have our own uh, our strengths. And we also have our own weaknesses. And we, we cover for those in, in sometimes ways that, uh, you know, uh, is, uh, uh, hurts, hurts others. But again, our president has maintained you all out there, Shadena, to be more positive, to be uh, 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 a hard worker, to, to pray for those that are on the front line. And doctors, small that yeah, our prayers for them be made stronger and more concerted. They'll be more effectual, and results will be given. And we'll honor and, and glorify our Creator. So again, we are all in this together, and as our leadership uh, works to the benefits and to bring about enhanced quality of life for our offices in the land honoring our creator, the highest power in the world. He created us, the universe. And so again, uh, all the rest is just noise. All the rest is just, uh, you know, scripture says, hey, wooden stubble, it's gonna burn up and blow away. And make our, of our existence here is to, again, reach out to those and weaker, than us, maybe health-wise and strength-wise, and we're all in this together. We are, can all become uh, better uh, in this pandemic by just a simple decision and decide to end me more highly than myself. So I appreciate, again, our president's leadership in this. to uh, make our Navajo Nation greater before the pandemic, greater coming out of this, this pandemic. We need more economic development. And with that comes infrastructure. We need more furniture stores and appliance stores. And we need more grocery stores. We need better managers to come home from uh, working abroad and helping other people attain, which is come on home, our young professionals and those wanting to move home. We need jobs here. We need more shoe stores and clothing stores. We need more restaurants. We need more storefronts, period, to help our people. Again, 2020 was a tough year for all of us. And there are uh, uh, so many stories for uh, our creator to, to show up and to show out. God is God has been. So though 2020 may have been a tough year for all of us, let's make all 21 an even better year. Let's come out better for it. 2021, let's make it our comeback year. 2020 was a setback, but 2021 is the perfect setup for a comeback. Again, we are all in this together, so we appreciate you all. Let's continue to be safe. Our Navajo people are strong and resilient. We have the vaccines now. Again, we can uh, at this time, entertain developing a, a more robust uh, 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 economic recovery because uh, the, the vaccines are here. We're on the cusp of emerging through uh, uh, coming out of this pandemic. And as we um, uh, advocate again for our um, stores to open up at the essentials and non essentials, and, uh, and I'm just recapping again where we have come through this time uh, seven days a week. Uh, let's limit our travel abroad, let's stay home. Let's buy Navajo, buy local, and uh, you know our Creator will bless us and uh, acknowledge Him as well. He owns all the cattle on a thousand hills, and all the gold and silver is His. And when we uh, line up with His principles, He blesses the land, He blesses the people. And so we're looking forward to that time. We're praying like it it depends on God, but we're going to work like it depends on us. Okay, so 2021, the year of all comebacks. Amen. Amen. So appreciate this time. So I'm going to give the, uh, the the next speaker, Dr. Jill Jim here, I believe is coming up next. 
And uh, we have, again, we have a Captain Brian Johnson from the Nava Area IHS. We have Dr. Perfilia Fowler from our uh, executive director from, uh, for our human resources here on Navajo. We have Dr. Va, we have Dr. Hammett, we have Dr. Christensen, all great leaders uh, who are doing a great job. We appreciate them and their leadership. And uh, we look forward to being able to meet again physically, if not uh, virtually right now. So uh, thank you, Dr. Jim, for your great leadership and everything that you've done throughout this time. We appreciate it. And uh, may you continue to be safe and God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Jill Jim, Navajo, Navajo um, Department of Health. Um, thank you, Vice President Adod. Um, thank you, President Nez, for um, sharing all the information. And this is the town hall where we always do our COVID-19 updates. So, um, President Nez, and also Vice President, and continuing to um, fight this battle in um, COVID-19 and uh, we, the disease was called COVID-19 and it was discovered in 2019. So it's definitely made its year. Um, and I just want to reiterate that um, there's a lot of unknown. So uh, my name is Dr. Jill Jim. I'm the executive director for the Navajo Department of Health. Um, the cousin Sagi Nas eight out of Lenny Jodi, um, at the Shikon, he chinked on his guest Keto, but that is far that Ohlia. We have different dialects, I guess, across the Navajo Nation. Continue to wear your face mask, that the, um, is what we always say. So, um, also indoors and outdoors, um, at your workplace or in the grocery stores, or if people that you don't know, um, or not live in the same household with um, if you travel or if you're home too when you have visitors coming in, even your own family members to wear your um, mask indoors and outdoors. Also maintaining your so physical distancing of six feet or more. Um, these are all just preventive measures that I just want to review with everyone again and washing your hands properly as well, um, the full 20 seconds and also cleaning and disinfecting high touch surface areas as well. So continue to um, clean your hands and also disinfect um, in all areas, households and your vehicles, wherever you go. And so I wanna just show this slide here. Um, the next one is just to continue to um, wash your hands for 20 seconds as I indicated. John Hilaki, John Dob, a cock and that on, he lots of the Kandaki store, um, a job on, um, rinsing that in door and making sure you dry it to all soccer. In Halchen and Dana Tindo, on he gave the nether, um, visit than his own, I hated the non Nishta with Argo. In he lodged your Kandaki, so that the Nisha door or she would all that. And these are the only prevention tools that we have right now. Even though we do have a vaccine, these are the tools that we have um, in our daily use is to continue to wash our hands and all those other mask wearing. And then we do have a lot of community spread right now and Dr. Val will cover that. And so we're not out of the woods. And so all of this we have to continue to do and and these guidelines that are from CDC and recommendations are very important because timing is a factor. Um, also, uh, when you're exposed and also when you decide to possibly move 
around outside your household to visit people or go to work. So when you are waiting for test results, um, it's best to stay home, um, don't go to work or don't go to public places until you get your test results. And that's what we always mention as quarantine. If possible, stay in a separate room and use a separate bathroom um, because you don't know at some point until you get your results um, that you've tested positive or not and continue to wear your face covering indoors, especially if you're waiting for results. Even though um, it's among your own family members, avoid sharing items and also cleaning and disinfecting regularly and washing your hands. Monitoring your symptoms and then notify people you have been in contact with um, a possibly another person that was positive. So you're secondarily exposed to somebody. So make sure that you let in people know or track where you've been because a contact tracer might contact you. Also be cooperative with the contact tracers. We don't have that many and we're short on contact tracers. So if you do get a call, it's just for the safety of how to track um, cases, make sure we get people taken care of and identified and get them tested if they need to get tested. Also, if you don't have symptoms, still stay at home and don't go to work. Mm -hmm. And as well as wearing your cloth face covering, continue to do that if you don't have symptoms either. And so it's always um, just best to stay home and make sure that you're clearly um, cleared uh, with your testing before you go um, as well. In the next slide, I'll show the timing period as well. So if you test positive, um, continue to stay home, drink plenty of fluids and hopefully um, you use any kind of um, over-the-counter medication for fever and pain. If you test negative, stay on alert. Um, also, if you're exposed to a COVID positive quarantine. So a quarantine means that you still have to stay the full 14 days um, after you've been exposed to somebody. And it could be even your own family member. There's plenty of um, gatherings that still occurred over the holidays. And um, so make sure you reduce your exposure and so when um, the incubation time period um, sometimes is unknown to us, and hopefully um, some of this will help understand that um, it's very important to know that you're gonna have to monitor yourself. And I've showed this a couple of times, but I always like to just re-show this so everyone understands that Jane went to um, a holiday party. Who knows, it's probably not holiday parties anymore. Hopefully no one is gathering and so, she went on day zero and on day three, she learned she was exposed to someone that was positive and she decided to self-isolate at home. So on day four, she gets tested and she tests negative on day six. And then um, Jane probably thinks it's okay. Um, I tested negative, let me go shopping, visit other people, go to work. Um, but then on day eight, she decides to do that. And now she's exposed to 10 people um, as close contacts and maybe because you test negative you think um, well I can I don't have um, I'll continue not to I'll continue to move around and so because she was exposed people or individuals and especially Jane needs to monitor herself for 14 days but on day 10 she finally gets sick and she gets tested positive so during the then to day 10 she's exposed to 10 people and now they're all um, have COVID and possibly will have COVID, but they're all under close contact and monitoring. And I think that's the part is um, we continue to hear. Mm -hmm. We have employee exposures that are still being reported where employees are still coming to work when they're, um, when they're possibly sick and they shouldn't be coming to work at all. So they're either thinking it's regular flu or something else or allergies. But the best thing at this time to reduce transmission is for people to stay home. And especially if you find out you've been in close contact, make sure you don't go to work. And even at work, please like stay home when you are sick. Um, you don't want to risk your employees. You do have coworkers that might be high risk employee, um, or high risk at work. And so every employee employer should be providing PPEs and also access to um making sure that there is um, leave policies that can support employees to make sure they're not coming to work when they're sick and then they're social distancing and maintaining a clean environment um, all the time. So there's a reduced infection and also how to deal with consumers. But I believe on Navajo, we do a good job, but for governmental programs, we dearly need to do a lot of work on 
on these protocols and enforcing that, but there is community spread everywhere. So sometimes it might be hard to identify that, but if you do deal with an exposure at a place of business, um, there is a reporting mechanism so we can make sure that we identify clusters or any kind of outbreaks. So um, even as a public person, um, as a consumer of a food establishment or um, a customer of an entity, um, everyone is welcome to report here if you know of that and really just ask us a few questions and then that is um, not identifiable and then we actually call and ensure that they are taking the proper steps or if we need to close the entity down, especially if they're a food establishment. Um, if it's a tribal program, we try to get cleaning services um, done for the program and then um, that way we can reduce the transmission. So know that this tool still exists, it's still operable across the Navajo Nation. And then we also work with health facilities as well. There is a there is a continued two week lockdown, not a three week lockdown. And the lockdown is more like a shelter in place. Um, we are in a shelter in place during the week, essential services are in place. And so people still have access to um, grocery stores and gas. And um, I did see comments um, that encouraging people to come and do their essential shopping during the week, even, even if an employee has to take leave. Uh, one person goes from the household to do errands as well, to take your entire family. And so when there's a, a weekend lockdown, it's basically just to reduce trend movement across the Navajo Nation. So there isn't an increase in transmission of COVID-19 and also refraining from people from gathering is also um, very important. But I think that it's very um, understandable that um, we need to access our essential services. So do that during the week when they're open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. But the mm -hmm. safest place is at home. So continue to do that um, and stay home as much as you can. And that is the purpose of the shelter in place. So I just wanted to mention all of that just as a precaution and prevention. So Ashin Hide Danit El. Um, um, Captain Brian Johnson is with the Navajo Area IXS office and I would want to introduce his team and everyone on this call are part of the Health Command Operations Center. Um, it's always a privilege to work with everyone and all the hard work that we all do and I appreciate everyone's time here to share information today. So, Captain Johnson, I will hand it over to you. Thank you. Dr. Hello, thank you, Dr. Jim. Appreciate uh, the opportunity again this week to be on the um, the Facebook Live session to share information uh, con concerning uh, the efforts of um, towards towards COVID nineteen. Um, I also want to just mention that I'll mention some uh, brief highlights here. And also, we'll, we'll turn time over to uh, Dr. Loretta Christensen, who is our Chief Medical Officer, of course, with the Navajo Area IHS. And then uh, after that, we'll move on to uh, Dr. Va, who works in our, our Chin Li service unit and uh, does an outstanding job working with uh, what we refer to as epi data or epi epidemiological data. Um, Again, I'm, I'm Captain Brian Johnson. I serve as the uh, Acting Deputy Area Director at Navajo Area uh, Indian Health Service in uh, St. Michael's, Arizona. 
my job is to uh, work with the actor Miss Rosalind So to um, work with our headquarters, IHS headquarters out of Rockville, Maryland, as well as provide oversight uh, for the uh, federal service units here on the Navajo Nation. As a part of that, uh, we partner with uh, multiple tribal health organizations that are on the Navajo Nation that everybody is likely familiar with, including uh, Fort Defiance uh, or, or Sehotso Medical Center, uh, Tuba City uh, Regional uh, uh, Corporation. We also work with, with the Winslow Indian Health uh, Care System, as well as Utah Navajo Health System, and of course the Navajo Nation directly and um, Sage Memorial as well. So we have partnerships across the Navajo Nation as well as working with our own and managing our own uh, federal facilities. Um, I just wanna mention to everybody that in, in terms of area office in St. Michael's, we continue to, to uh, coordinate and communicate on a daily basis with our headquarters office uh, in Rockville, Maryland. And so any information that is uh, coming out, any, any new uh, types of funding, or um, other issues as related to COVID-19. We, we do have uh, routine calls on a daily basis to coordinate and plan and accordingly. Um, we also uh, more locally here on the Navajo Nation, as uh, Dr. Jim referred to, we, were, we appreciate her comments this morning, um, working with the uh, Navajo Nation Health Command Operations Center. Again, I've stressed in previous sessions that it's critical here on the Navajo Nation that our healthcare system, um, that we work in a coordinated fashion. And that includes both tribal and uh, federal health facilities along with the Navajo Nation to make sure we're doing what we can to have a consistent uh, integrated healthcare system here on the nation to serve Navajo people to the best of our abilities. And um, again, so it's critical that we continue to have uh, unified uh, command uh, or unified coordination group meetings uh, at the uh, Health Command Center in uh, Window Rock to make sure that we're all sharing information um, and, and making sure that we're doing what we can with the resources that we have. Um, each day, I just, just to give some awareness, each day, whether it's uh, Ms. So, myself, uh, Dr. Christensen, um, and others on our leadership team and, and with our uh, federal service units. We join multiple calls uh, just to share information and to, and to listen to what others are doing here on the Navajo Nation. Uh, whether that's you know, planning or, dis or monitoring for epidemiological data, you know, what's happening with our population across the Navajo Nation. Um, if sometimes we're talking about isolation sites, and um, how do we best care for our population, making sure that we have the capacity, uh, given the number of patients that we've seen throughout this COVID-19 uh, pandemic. We also uh, have uh, conversations and calls on uh, vaccine. We're all interested, of course, in uh, COVID vaccine. And um, we, we do have phone calls talking about the distribution and administration. And um, we have some outstanding leaders in that and individuals who have participated uh, with that uh, throughout the area. And then basically we also join calls that we just provide updates uh, just to share information about uh, challenges that our facilities are facing, uh, things that we're having successes on so that best practices can be shared across the area. So, um, you know, this kind of communication really does support uh, coordination of efforts across the area. And it's indifferent of uh, whether we're considered to be a tribal health organization or a federally managed organization. Uh, we all have things to share and uh, we all have uh, improvements that we can always make. So we do look out for those, um, those opportunities. Um, now, at a very high level, I think most of us, it's been mentioned in this call, as well as others, that here on the Navajo Nation, we, we are seeing just a slight uh, plateauing of cases. Um, however, what we do know as well, and again, this was shared earlier, is that we still have a high number of cases on the Navajo Nation. 
And what that means is that um, we still need to continue implementing everything that we've talked about and shared in the past in terms of uh, you know wearing masks, in terms of watching our distance, in terms of washing hands. Uh, you know, Dr. Jill Jim provided some uh, great information and illustrations on her during her presentation that I think it's always a good reminder. Um, it's so easy to forget uh, some of these basic things in the lives that we live today. We're so busy. So again, uh, continue wearing your mask, watching your distance with others and uh, washing your hands. Um, I just also wanted to comment on, again, at a more of a high level, that the Navajo Area IHS continues to work with um, the Department of Defense, uh, more specifically the uh, Army and Navy, who have placed uh, some of their providers or medical staffing at our facilities to help provide support, uh, specifically uh, in the area of nursing, uh, in, in the three locations that we have, uh, most of these staff include uh, Northern Navajo Medical Center, uh, Chinle Hospital, as well as Gallup Indian Medical Center. And we continue to um, uh, uh, host those individuals. And again, they've been an outstanding partner in making sure the Navajo people get the best care available. Uh, in the region. So we, again, we appreciate their efforts and we'll continue to work with them. And um, I don't know if you'll ever have an opportunity, but if you do see any of those individuals or if you're at one of our facilities, I certainly welcome you to say thank you to them uh, for the work that they're doing as they're on deployment and uh, have been um, in some cases uh, close to 30 days at this point. So um, again, we look, we, we really do appreciate the work that our Army and Navy friends are, are assisting us with. Of course, with, um, I think the, what, what's everybody's interest is the COVID-19 vaccine. And um, that's something that's of interest, uh, of high interest, both locally, uh, regionally, nationally, and even internationally. And um, Dr. Christensen will, We'll share some information here shortly on that. And um, I just I just want to thank um, everyone out there for your patience and understanding as we work through this. And I know Dr. Christensen will will touch on this, but we realize um, knowing that there are um, vaccine that are available at this point for COVID-19 and knowing that we have priorities that that we follow. I know it can be a time where uh, everyone is wanting to be vaccinated and we just continue to ask for your patience because uh, there's a lot of planning and coordination that goes into that. There's a lot of work going on. And again, Dr. Christensen will, will provide more information on that. But uh, uh, we do uh, appreciate everybody uh, with their patience as we work through that through that process and we'll continue to share information as we can. So at this point, um, I just again want to thank uh, Dr. Christensen and Dr. Vaugh for joining today's call. And um, at the conclusion of their uh, presentations, Dr. Perfilia Fowler will uh, provide, uh, uh, in, will interpret uh, in Navajo the information that was shared in the English language. So I'll turn it over now to Dr. Christensen. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Loretta Christensen. I am the Chief Medical Officer for Navajo Area IHS, and I have been uh, um, leading the COVID vaccine plan and distribution uh, in collaboration with all of our healthcare facilities in Navajo. Very happy to be with you and explain some of the things that are going on. I want to update you and provide information. Um, we are actually doing an extraordinary job in Navajo with our distribution and administration of vaccines. And I thank each and every one of you who has had their vaccine and those of you who are patiently waiting first, because this speaks to the strength of the Navajo Nation in supporting each other by being safe it keeps your family safe, your friends safe, um, our clan members safe, and certainly our community safe when we all get vaccinated and we do not expose others to possible COVID-19. Uh, 
I had the opportunity and the honor of being invited to present yesterday at a global worldwide webinar and we were I was asked to present on vaccine distribution. So we are actually being known very much across the country as being efficient and timely with the way we are handling what we are receiving for vaccines. I'm very grateful for the number of vaccines we've received. We've done better than many, many places. Uh, we are told that every week we will get further allotments and we are planning on that as, as we continue to plan events to have our people get vaccinated. And we are very effective in getting these out the door, if you will, and into your arms. So I'm very proud of all the people that have worked so hard on this. And this includes every single health facility in Navajo. We came together as a team. We've worked very hard together uh, to organize. Everyone is supporting and helping each other. Uh, there's no territories. There's no turf battles. It's all, how can we get this out to our people? How can we help each other? So I think you could be very proud of all the work that's being done and the cooperation that's going on across Navajo. Uh, just for an example, if you look at our most eastern areas, which is in the Crown Point area, and our most western, which is actually our urban site in Flagstaff, Naka, we distribute all across those areas every time that was necessary for the Pfizer Ultra Freeze to be given out to facilities. I'm very happy to report we now have six uh, Ultra Freeze freezers across our area, which now allows us to place vaccine in each of those freezers for easier access for the other facilities who do not have a freezer. We are still getting Moderna, which uh, um, President Nez mentioned, which does not require the extreme freeze. And we are trying to use those out in our more rural areas, in our smaller healthcare clinics, and, and some of our big events that we're going to, going to be having across Navajo. So uh, we will continue to keep you updated on what we have received and how we're doing. And we will continue to advocate and certainly um, president has been very essential to that advocacy of us getting more and more vaccines and we will just keep administering them as quickly as we can, as safely as we can and keep hoping that more shipments will keep coming in every week. I wanted to touch on a few things with the vaccines. I know it, that you may have become frustrated at times trying to figure out how to get your vaccine. And, you know, each of our healthcare facilities is unique in their own way, and they have different community programs and different styles, if you will. All of them have the objective of getting you vaccinated. So please work with your primary care doctor for an appointment. If you go in for something else, um, you can request the vaccine and they will actually offer it to you at that time. This week is our elder week, so I want to encourage everyone over 65 to be thinking about their vaccine this week and go to one of our facilities where you get your care and and see what is being offered. We actually have drive up vaccines uh, that are being done at uh, Chinle and Theroux today. Uh, they do ask you make an appointment so you're not waiting in your car for a very long time. We want to try to make this efficient and safe for you. Um, I thanks to Northern Navajo who vaccinated over 1,700 people in a drive up last week, um, which is just an amazing job by that team. So our, our, our staffs are working extremely hard for you. Um, it's very cold outside today. So just remember that you may be in your car with your heater on, but our staff is out uh, in the cold waiting for you to drive up so they can give you your vaccination and, and give you that protection. So, you know, uh, we're very grateful for that. And I hope you, you are as well, because these, these people, this staff is just amazing that they are still going after all this time. Um, and they are still testing widely at this time. So we have a lot of people doing some great things around this area. Well, a couple of things I want to, um, let you know is that when you do get your vaccine, and you may have heard this, you are still not immune or safe. You have to wait until we get the second dose. So after the first dose at day 10, that's day 10, you will achieve 
a little bit over 50% immunity and you will be safe, 50% safe, so to speak. When you get your second dose, 21 to 28 days later, depending on which vaccine it is, it goes up over 90%. And then you, then you are um, as safe as you can be with the vaccination. As everyone has told you, wear your mask, wash your hands, watch your distance, because there's still that little percentage that's possible uh, to get exposed and become positive. So still be very, very careful. You think, well, 90% is pretty good. Well, actually, 90% for vaccines is amazing. So we are very lucky that these first two vaccines that have come out seem to be showing us that, that 9 out of 10 people will be covered very, very well. And there will just be those few that might be vulnerable. So right now, we have very good vaccines that were developed in, in record time. Uh, I know some of you may be worried that it was too fast, but this was... Very good science. These are very good vaccines. They have been tested. We, in fact, on Navajo, with your help and, and your support, did a, a trial of the Pfizer vaccine here. And we are very confident that it is a good vaccine to give our people. So there are others coming down the line. I'm not sure they will be 90%, but we'll see how those come out in the studies. And I know Dr. Hammett may also speak to some of this in, in just a few moments. Um, so please know that you check in with your service unit. They should have posted um, information on how that you can get your vaccine, either drive up, they have what we call closed pods, and a pod means place of distribution, meaning you're protected there, you come in there and they're gonna have 30, 40, or 50 people for that day, and that's where you would get your vaccine in a safe environment with distancing, everybody will be wearing gloves and all the proper equipment to give you your vaccine. Um, sometimes, uh, uh, Chin Lee today, they will check you in and get you into an appointment so that you might be able to get, uh, uh your vaccine there. Um, they will have, uh, you know, a certain amount of vaccine and then they'll run out for the day. Um, and sometimes for the week, which is good. That means we're using what we are being given. So, um, I want to thank all of our staff, um, Lieutenant Commander Erica Harker has been our lead for the pharmacy for the vaccines, and she's done an outstanding job. Uh, she provides the report that we, we review with you on this um, Facebook Live. And um, Sherry Helton, who's the head of our EOC, is our distribution leader who has getting those vaccines all the way to Flagstaff in a timely and safe fashion. So... I do want to thank all of our staff. I want to thank each and every one of you for all your strength and resilience and your willingness to step up and get the vaccine. This will help us moving forward. It is just one tool. And as everyone's told you, we must still do all our other safety measures. So we will keep you updated as best we can. And remember, it's Elder Week. We want you to get your vaccines. So blessings to all of you, and thank you for your time today. I will now hand this over to Dr. Va. Hi, good morning. Thank you, Dr. Um, Dr. C and um, everybody else on this call. I do appreciate this opportunity to share information with, um, with the community out there. Let me go ahead and start and share my screen. Um, and of course, I'll be presenting on the epidemiological data um, that helps support our public health response as well as our um, reopening and gating criteria. And so this is our last analytical period. And you know what the way we do these reports that we do assess things daily uh, um, a week, but we try to do it in um, two week windows to get an idea of um, a longer term in terms of trends. And so this is this two week window is between December 25th, so around Christmas, um, and through to January 7th. And here are, as a reminder, you know, the way we're looking at this is that we do look at it in broad, to assess what's happening here in Navajo Nation and to sort of understand the situation with the, with COVID, the COVID pandemic um, and to understand our ability to respond. We look at cases testing um, hospital capacity as well as public health capacity um, in regards to 
staff, resources, contact tracing, and now um, with vaccination data as well. And so as President has noted, the, what I'm showing you here, and I'm just gonna add to what he mentioned, was this is the curve for Navajo Nation, but this is only our second surge. And so, you know, we do know that we went into the second surge soon after Labor Day. A uh, shelter pl in place order was placed on um, November 16th. Um, and since then, you know, in addition to everything that we've been doing with contact tracing, public health messaging, um, and, you know, effective testing, what we do know is that we ha are effectively in a plateau. You know, we didn't see a bump with Thanksgiving and we haven't yet seen a bump with Christmas. We know there are cases based on our contact tracing data. We do know that there are cases associated with Thanksgiving and Christmas, but it didn't result in a significant bump for all of Navajo Nation. And it's still too early to see the impact of New Year's at this time. And so, you know, Again, comparing ourselves to the Navajo Nation, um, to the United States, with the Navajo Nation in orange and the United States in blue, is that we do understand all these different efforts on the ground at the local teams um, and then at the leadership level. You know, every tool possible available to us for an effective public health response we put out there. Um, and we've continued to, to put efforts in those areas has led to a plateau, a significant plateau. Um, whereas what you see with the United States, if you're looking towards the end, you do see like they did indeed have a Thanksgiving bump and are now experiencing a surge from, this, from the seasonal impact. Um, you know, regardless of that, yes, we are indeed plateauing, is that the burden here in Navajo Nation has always been very high, whether you're looking at the number of cases or if you're looking at, you know, those that had required, got so sick that they required hospitalizations um, or who have passed away. And so here, when you look at Navajo Nation by just the general eight um, areas compared to those four states, notice that they are still very red and very purple. Uh, meaning that the burden of cases, the extent of COVID-19 spread, continues to be incredibly high. And the risk of COVID-19 still remains very, very high out in the communities. Um, this again is how, how we sort of compare ourselves. The only thing I would add to what President Nez mentioned earlier is yes, we did drop in rank to number ninth, meaning, you know, like a number of cases are slowing down. We're still growing, but the number, the, the way it's growing is slowing down. Um, and so we dropped to ninth. But in addition to that, the rest of the United States, including Arizona and Utah, are experiencing uh, a surge on a surge um, in their cases. And that's why we have now we are now following Arizona and Utah, and they have moved up in ranking. This is another way we try to understand what's happening across. Um, regionally across the Navajo Nation. Um, as I noted earlier, you know, if you're looking at those eight general catchment areas, we do know that the burden of cases remains incredibly high in Chinle and Crown Point and Shiprock, but the others are still in red. And so it means that there's still extensive um, widespread community spread. Um, and we do look at, you know, you know, when we're thinking about test positivity, all of these areas with the exception of Winslow still have test positivities greater than 20%, which is one in five people, if not one in four people are testing positive for COVID-19. And so that's why, you know, we still urge vigilance and adherence to wearing a mask, social distancing, doing all those things you're doing already. Um, just because again, the risk is still very high out in the communities. Now, this is another way just to support what we're seeing, right? You know, the questions to the EPI team is like, you know, are these are these strategies working? Um, it, are we doing a better job at trying to turn this outbreak around? And one way to do that is to look at what you're seeing on those graphs. Is this really a flattening of the curve? or is? This, and so to do that, we look at what we call doubling time, the ability for this outbreak to double in size in going into the second wave or the second surge of cases, we knew that our outbreak initially started to double in size like every seven days, every week to two weeks, which is quite fast. Um, but at this time, it's doubling, it's taking two months to double in size. So we know the growth of this outbreak is slowing down. The other thing we look at 
is what is called that reproduction rate for the virus. And that means if I have COVID-19, how effectively will I transmit that to other people around me? Um, if it's greater than one, then you know one person can transmit it to one and a half or two people, then you know like that virus is reproducing quick among the population. Um, but if it's less than one, then you know that you, we should expect fewer cases. And we've seen our reproductive number, RT, slowly go less than one over the last few weeks and it's currently at 0.78. So that means one person transmits COVID-19 effectively to less than one person. Um, so we should start, you know, we, we are seeing what we should start to see is um, fewer cases. Our test positivity, again, still remains high as 24%. Um, so, you know, this is close to one in four people who test for COVID-19 will have a result that is positive. Um, in regards to hospitalizations, you know, in order, it's one thing to have like mild disease of COVID-19, but the, the concern has always been like, if you have such high burden of disease, there will always be a percentage of the population that have more severe disease that requires hospitalization. Um, it requires more acute care. And here in Navajo Nation, if you're just looking at the second graph, what we do know is that we do track the percent of beds used or ICU beds used. And for um, for all of our sites, IHS and 638s, it's currently at 70%, but we do know that our 638 facilities are beyond 80% full. And we also understand that our IHS facilities actually had to expand beds to respond to the hospitalizations. And if you're looking at the four states, which you see here, is that New Mexico is still in contingency expansion, meaning their beds are still beyond um, beyond 100% full in terms of ICU beds used. And you know Arizona is feeling the same, and Utah is feeling the same. Um, in Colorado, is between 70 to 80% full. We did expand our contact tracers. Um, to 438 contact tracers across all of Navajo Nation, um, but we still don't have enough for the burden of cases that we have. And the importance of contact tracing, you know, is that they help us identify and reach out to those community members that might have been exposed and, pro and provide guidance for quarantine. Um, and then the investigation among cases for guidance and guidance for isolation. And so they still remain to play a critical role in this entire response. Now, what I do want to applaud is the efforts between Navajo Nation and IHS and really getting these vaccines out there. And so at this point, this is current data. And so at this point, um, as Dr. C mentioned, Captain Johnson mentioned, and everyone else on this call mentioned, is that we had 26,360 vaccines distributed to our sites here. And of those, 18,012 were administered. And so we're doing quite good. Um, it says 68% here, but we know we just got a recent shipment. We, um, we're beyond 70% um, of our doses being administered. So they are getting those those vaccine doses and we are administering them, getting to the arms of people as soon as we can. Um, and so I do applaud the team on the ground as well as the, the vaccine team for being able to do this. And you sort of see that comparison to the United States where it's at 35%. Um, and then at this time, we have more than 3,000 people who have completed immunizations with two doses and we'll continue to track that. And so, you know, of course, we still remain at phase zero um, because of because of the burden of cases. Our test positivity is beyond 10 percent; it's at 24 percent. You know, and our hospitals are still functioning in crisis care, um, where we did have to expand beds among IHS facilities. And um, as noted, you know, we are still um, we are still st our contact tracing team and staff are still stressed. And in regards to the burden of cases as well. And as I showed you, is that we are still in the red and purple across many of the areas. Um, and so the burden of cases is still remain high. And so this is just a snapshot. And I just, you know, a, a quick overview looking at the four states, including Navajo Nation. Um, and we see that, you know, all, including Navajo Nation, New Mexico, and you in Colorado, they're reaching like this plateau, but there have been a, a 
an ex exponential increase in cases in Utah and Arizona, um, where you see like even the reproductive numbers have gone beyond one. And so you know that virus is transmitting quicker and reproducing quicker in those populations, whereas ours is 0.78. Here is like a broad look at by states, but I think what's more helpful is probably by counties. And you see how this supports what we're hearing in regards of this holiday surge, like, you know, the U.S. already had a high plateau, and then they had like this surge from the holiday season. And so you see Southern California is just completely in severe outbreak. Um, almost all the counties in Arizona, um, Utah conditions have worsened. And then you see the counties that really encompass the Navajo Nation and where we are, what we're dealing with still. Um, and then lastly, you know, with all of that, I commend everybody out there that are doing what they need to do to continue to stay safe. I agree with Dr. C of what she was saying is that luckily we have the vaccine, we're administering it as soon as we can to everybody, to those in the community. And so I do, I am grateful for those that have already gotten their vaccine and those that are patiently waiting for their vaccine when their time comes. And so for our public health response, you know, for the immediate future, it's, it will still require universal mask wearing, social distancing, avoiding gatherings, um, making sure that we do effective contact tracing as well as testing for early identification of cases. Um, and now with the vaccine and trying to make sure we try to vex to um, improve our vaccination rates as much as possible. And at this time, I'm going to go ahead and hand this over to Dr. Laura Hammett, who will be able to provide some, some answers um, to some frequently asked questions surrounding vaccines. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm sorry. It should be to Dr. Fowler first. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Ma. Yet as you get us in the Ecuador Shady, and neither had to see about trash net the auto a Nikan Hinatani Lini, um, Banada dot ah. Yet as shady, my dishkis Nishan Torichin, Ibashes Chin, Ashche Yadas Nando Tapaha Dashiche. Oh, Koto E Yadi Brian Johnson with Yeni A Acting Deputy Director Jilla E um Yuman Lenny Aja Area Ahbashi Aja Bana Sato Batalate Nat Ani La E Zel and Bishaz Anja Ihe Nihish Din need Ado Nakun the Adi Nihi the Nebelka Hotzoge O Ochatas Anako E Yeg or Hishin Dail Nishto Njuno E Hishta Dail Nish is the El Imbishnas Ago Tsahot Soja Ado Tuna Nestiz a ad on le um base in the legit ayat and the zen embedded house so he yeg no a hidden tail nish adona kuna egi a ya hashin sagodi uh the nepa is the il in the nas ajo the nests twe sign it's a cage cane lini aja banna hat ado al sonapa al kit the net the higi a hajobik it the neat eat or aha bini ye a isla natele Ado a quitchen a hashin sukapesh behind the ebbet in the huitne, a deep up in the huit, ado pa, a large pap and tea kiss, her late a angel no nada do tato, her late a is a e, a bit pahato, nito yat e honana tato, er ado, a salat so than lenny the arger, he ka e j a is a ne ka aj a ya hashin sukabananish eat any aid of a he needs in. A D not ani nezo chin lido nan George ja aj e salato dan lini e ajin hi ka e j a kwati um is the um a death nini bahas lingi aj e hashin sako ni hit up baka uh ba ye nitsen a konasko net nej ashhonden hi la a tan da histon hi chid on his e ada de spal and hit an da chiko na han hitne. Dr. Christensen, a D is a in a lineage, it's a let day. It is a chief medical officer. Le Ado a large beta in the she gave the Kodoshan and the large in Siniti is a has Lingi Aja, um, is a little has on the go Aja a bitch of Hulia, a Koyego by a he needs and though Aja Dale Nishin Juno at the Ila, a Kodini hit the Nebelka Hot Zorge. Halate a engine or a tatas or zoton hit in the end lini, but bata usla, a coitan zrag up and here hot el zin, a quati global will yet add the slaha zoftan zango, 
Ada <laughs> Ya <laughs> 
ออนอดีเซสเกปนาสออเซลเอปนาสออเกเออัตติโตโตดาสออดาชิเกโดชิดเนอัตติเออออยออดอีโตยันเตสเกตอคอนเดจเออออสาเปสเบลทะเอดิ
Dr. Jill Jim. Thank you to uh, the IHS team, Captain Johnson, Dr. Christensen, uh, and Dr. Baugh. And we're going to have Dr. Hammond in a bit. But before we do, we thought we'd bring you a live vaccine distribution uh, event here in through New Mexico. So uh, I'm going to turn the time over to Mr. Alan Jones here, who's going to give us an overview of what's going on and give us uh, other uh, vaccine distributions for the uh, Crown Point Service Unit. Uh, good afternoon, Alan Jones here. Uh, so basically, it's uh, flowing well out. Uh, at the very beginning, we had cars uh, lining up outside of the Highway 371. Uh, we had the Navo PD helping us out uh, to get the flow going, and as well as our security folks. Uh, people are very grateful to go ahead and get the, the vaccine. You now, some are a little frustrated because they're under the age group. Uh, we, I promise them that we will be having some additional uh, vaccine events, uh, but right now we're focusing on 75 uh, or greater as our really primary focus, but we are taking the 65. And we're getting a good mix of both groups of people. Uh, so it's going out pretty well, and uh, tomorrow our Crown Point Service Unit will be headed to Polo Pedalo Senior Center and take care of our patients and families out there. And on Thursday, we'll be at the uh, Crown Point Northwest parking lot uh, doing the same thing to help our population in that area. Otherwise, everybody's, uh, even though there's long waits, the patients are being very uh, grateful and very uh Happy, not getting frustrated too much that they have to wait a long time to get the shot. That's all I have to say. And it's a beautiful day to do it. So the wind is cooperating. So it is cold out here, but uh, the weather is cooperating to give us a little sunshine. Thank you. All right, Mr. Jones, thank you so much for your team. Team members here, Lillian Jones, uh, Gwen Livingston from uh, John Hopkins, uh, Gary uh, Badrish. Charles, uh, Matley, uh, Vicky, Charlie, Taryn, Detsoy, uh, Alan Jones, and Myron uh, Johnson. Oh yeah, come on over. A couple of come to mind also. We have our security team out here uh, helping us out. Uh, uh, two or three members from that team. We have Jones Largo. He's uh, our basically behind the scenes guy to help us keep everything going. We have the uh, CHRs from the Guru Group. Uh, they're located right over there, helping us with post observation. Uh, patients have to stay for 15 minutes, and they go through the line, make sure everybody's safe, and also do some uh, post education as well. But uh, I don't have their names, but they're, we appreciate all the help we can get. Also appreciate the help of Navajo PD who showed up, the uh, the Rue Fire uh, Rescue people that showed up as well and any others that I don't remember, but thank you, everybody. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Jones. Thank you for the organization and the planning that went into this here with the Crown Point Service uh, Unit. Uh, the team doing an outstanding job. Like I said, there's still over 100 doses still left here. If you're in the area of Theroux, we're at the Chapter House. Uh, I see the line has been going pretty quick. Uh, and so if you're in the area, you're 65 years and over, and you have, uh, or you're a high risk patient, come on over. If you want the shot, it's up to you. And uh, we, we thank uh, Mr. Johnson here as well for his hard work. And they're, they're, they're uh, here in a, in a warm, they're using uh, propane to heat their, their little uh, tent here. They're getting the dose. Uh, they're, they're mixing it back here, and that is uh, Charles back there. Charles, he's mixing the doses. So how many uh, doses in a vial, sir? There are five doses per vial. Five. Yep, and we're giving them in uh, three ml All right. You want to say a few words to the Navajo people who are on the town hall that we do every week? Dr. Yes. C and uh, Captain Johnson were on earlier. Just giving the Navajo people an update. Would you like to say a few words there, uh, Charles? Sure. Uh, well, uh, we have the vaccine. Unfortunately, right now our supply is limited, uh, but we're happy to vaccinate anybody who is willing to get the shot over 75. We highly recommend it. Uh, it you know, we're we're here to protect you know everybody's health, so we invite you to come in and, and get your shot. 
All right. Thank you, Charles. Now, that's Charles Matley uh, helping out, putting the uh, uh, doses ready for the uh, PHNs and the RNs. They're, they get the, the shots after he mixes it, put it in. Remember, there's one vial, uh, and, there's, and you can get five shots out of that. So that's what they're doing. And then if you look over here, this is where they're administering the shots, right in the vehicle, 65 years and over. Uh, and the high risk uh, uh, patients are also uh, coming in. So it's a great uh, process, a good process that they have down. And you can see now uh, some of the vehicles starting to come in. So if you're thinking that there's a long line, uh, not here at the Rue, so come out. And we just want to say thank you to Edmund Yazi, Delegate Yazi, for advocating for this uh, this uh, uh, vaccine uh, distribution event here in his community of Thoreau, New Mexico. So thank you so much, Edmund Yazi, Delegate Yazi, for uh, bringing this one closer to here. I think the next one tomorrow is Pablo Pintado, uh tomorrow or Crown Point yeah, on Thursday. Crown Point on Thursday. So uh, yeah, so these are happening all across the country. Uh, yeah, all across the country, really. But here on the Navajo Nation, uh, all across the eight service uh, areas. So you can see some of the elders here. Uh, I've been talking to many of them. They're they're in good spirits. Uh, you know, we just letting them know that uh, we appreciate you know them being open to taking the vaccine because we want them uh, to be uh, vaccinated. And it's up to them, as you know, it's up to everyone to uh, get this done. Uh, so. Uh, that's it. We're from uh, coming to you from uh, Peru, New Mexico. Those of you that are listening that are in the area, tell your relatives, vaccine distribution. There's about a hundred, over a hundred and so left and uh, until it runs out. So if you're wanting it, come on over to the Thiru Chapter House. Thank you so much. Let me turn the time over to uh, Dr. Hammond. Dr. Hammond, Dr. Hammond uh, take it away. Thank you. Thanks, President. I had the Yate She'e Laura Hammett Yenishe, Johns Hopkins uh, Center for American Indian Health, Banishnish. And I had the privilege of being at the Shiprock uh, vaccination event last Wednesday. And it's truly a, a remarkable um, accomplishment what, what you're seeing here in terms of vaccine distribution on Navajo Nation. And it's a real credit to uh, Navajo Nation leadership, to IHS leadership, to uh, tribal health organization leadership, to be able to have um, these vaccines rolled out as uh, efficiently as they are here. As you saw earlier, um, you know, Navajo Nation has done a much better job than the rest of the country in getting uh, the available vaccines administered and, and out to people. Um, I want to um, just touch on a few questions that have come up about the COVID-19 vaccines. Um, and also let people know that on the Thursday morning town hall, we'll talk a little bit more in detail about some of the uh, frequently asked questions about the vaccines that we're hearing. Um, but we'll do a, a little preview of that today um, to address some of the question, more, more common questions. Uh, one of the questions that does come up um, is whether or not this vaccine is being required or whether it's voluntary. Um, receiving this vaccine is voluntary. People can make the choice whether they want to receive this vaccine or not. Um, of course, from a public health standpoint, we're encouraging everybody who's eligible uh, to get the vaccine to go ahead and do that um, to protect themselves um, and their family members and their community. Uh, another question that comes up, and I'm just going to actually share um, a document that was created up by uh, Northern Navajo Medical Center um, so that people can see some of these uh, frequently asked questions that are uh, that, that we're hearing. Uh, we'll, one of them is just about, you know, these two different vaccines and what we know about the difference between the Pfizer vaccine and the Moderna vaccine. Um, and as you can see here, uh, the, they're both very efficacious, uh, so around 95% effective in preventing uh, COVID-19 disease. The Pfizer vaccine is um, allowed for patients 16 and older. Um, there are two doses given 21 days apart. 
Uh, for the Moderna vaccine, it's for patients 18 and older, and that is two doses, 28 days apart. So very similar there, but some, some differences that are important to pay attention to. Of course, right now on Navajo Nation, the focus is um, really on elders and on uh, high-risk patients. People have asked uh, about what's in the vaccine. Um, and I think it's important for people to know that neither of these vaccines have eggs, preservatives, latex, aluminum, or mer mercury in them. Um, and neither are made using fetal cells. Um, the, the Pfizer vaccine and the Moderna vaccine are both mRNA vaccines. Um, in addition to the mRNA, they also contain uh, lipids, which is like a fat coating around the mRNA that helps protect the mRNA um, because it's very fragile and degrades very quickly. So it helps protect the mRNA in order to be taken up by our cells. And then it all, uh, both of the vaccines also uh, contain some uh, uh, stability um, agents for uh, polyethylene glycol and salt and sugar or buffering solutions. Um, so they're very uh, clean vaccines in terms of how the vaccines are made. Um, the mRNA, people have asked a lot of questions about how mRNA vaccines work. The mRNA we can think about as instructions, um, essentially like a recipe. So when the mRNA is taken up by our cells, our cells read that recipe and it instructs the cells to make a replica of the spike protein that's on the outside surface of the coronavirus. When our body makes that replica of that spike protein, our body recognizes that as a foreign substance and we mount an immune response then. We make antibodies against that spike protein. By making those antibodies, we're then protected um, should we be exposed to the real thing. People ask, you know, Will this vaccine, can it make me sick? Um, the vaccine does not contain the virus at all. It doesn't contain any part of the virus. Um, so it can't actually make you sick um, with COVID, but it is common to have temporary side effects such as pain in your arm, feeling tired, having a mild headache or muscle pain, uh, chills, joint pain or fever. Again, these are common side effects that are seen after many different types of vaccines. And it really is just a sign that your body is building up its immune response. So even though you may feel like you're sick because you have the fever or the headache or the muscle pain, that's just your immune response. You're, you're building antibodies um, to fight off COVID-19 um, should you be exposed to it. Um, Another question is whether that getting the vaccine might cause you to have a positive test result. And the answer to that question is no, the getting the vaccine cannot cause uh, a positive uh, COVID-19 test result. There are two different vaccines that are being used on Navajo Nation right now, the Pfizer vaccine and the Moderna vaccine. And you heard um, several of the speakers talk about these two different vaccines. Um, it's important to know that um, whatever you got as your first shot should be the same for your second shot. So we shouldn't do any mixy matchy, um, get the same thing for your first shot and your second shot. Um, both of these vaccines provide excellent protection. Um, which one you get doesn't, doesn't particularly matter. It just um, largely depends on what supplies we have available. And um, as was said earlier, the the Moderna vaccine has less stringent uh, temperature uh, regulation, so it's a little bit easier to give in some of the more uh, rural settings. A lot of people on Navajo Nation have already had COVID-19 disease, and they have the question about whether they should still go ahead and get the vaccine or not. And the answer to that question is yes. Um, even if you've had COVID-19 disease, we don't know how long those antibodies will protect you for. Um, all of the data shows that they should provide protection for at least uh, around three months, uh, but we wanna make sure that there's long lasting protection and the vaccine um, helps give you 
um, that stronger immune response that can provide more long lasting protection. So if you've already had COVID-19 disease, you are still recommended to get the vaccine, um, but it is recommended to wait about 90 days after your initial infection before getting the vaccine. We don't know the full duration of protection. Those studies are still ongoing to see whether or not, you know, we might need a booster dose in a year. Um, we have to, we have still to determine that, but the protection from um, the vaccine is actually thought to last longer than if you were to have the COVID-19 infection itself. Another common question is about allergies. So if people have um, allergies, seasonal allergies, pet allergies, food allergies, it is safe to receive the vaccine. Um, the only people who should not receive the vaccine are those who've had uh, severe allergies like anaphylaxis after receiving an mRNA vaccine um, or who have uh, allergies to any of the ingredients listed in the vaccine um, or to polysorbate. And if you have a history of uh, strong allergic reactions, like you carry an EpiPen because you've had anaphylaxis in the past, then you will discuss this with your, with your provider and the person at the vaccine clinic um, to make that decision about whether to get vaccines that day um, and then be observed closely after 30 minutes, uh, 30 minutes after the vaccination. What it looks like most what we know about vaccines just in general is that around an anaphylaxis generally occurs with most vaccines and about one in a million doses of vaccine. Um, and in this case, it appears for these two vaccines, like it's closer to six uh, in, a mil in, in a million. So still a very, very, very rare event. Um, but it is something uh, to be aware of. And that is the reason that if you go to one of these uh, you know, drive through clinics, you have to be prepared or, or wherever you get your vaccine in a drive through clinic or in, uh, in uh, one of the IHS or tribal health organization clinics um, that you'll be prepared to be observed following that vaccination to make sure there aren't any allergic reactions. And I know a number of people have already spoken to the fact that even though these vaccines are highly efficacious, we still need to practice um, social distancing and we still need um, to wear masks until most of the community has been protected uh, with the COVID-19 vaccine. And uh, the reasons for that are because we, we don't want to unknowingly you know, transmit, even though we're, the vaccine is protecting us from becoming sick, um, we don't want to unknowingly potentially transmit that virus to somebody else um, that we work with or that is in our family or in our household. So it's still really important even after vaccination to continue these measures until we have uh, a high level of protection in the community. I'll um, stop there and we'll plan, as I said, we can um, make a note of other questions that are that are coming um, forward and we can uh, touch base on some more of these frequently asked questions when we talk again on Thursday. Thank you, Dr. Hammett. Uh, Dr. Laura Hammett. Nikitahanati <laughs> Um is the Satopa Nat the Dish Kisna Sa Echnapas Nahot Adole. Adoti is the um a deshnini uh nichol yaniki hashine la et on a hatos ni satati nido hashine la eta ash and ni a deshne tatohne a ko e ani hin hihol ni shik edos net slachato ni sana sodo is the a deshnini Chicken Kai Beshat Ot Beshat Ot Setano Sa E Anihi Nahasalado Konde Nihi Kode Nat Anin Linido Zeis in it and Linijo E I see Yego Yeta Anni 
Ashwanda <laughs> A a an ha ado di materna bet nini a di um te beat a tato de coheta hegi co asa is a in lini a etesne a quadi is a in lini a as aunt um hits east hanas nish a co is a neat eschic edo shit net ado di is a in lini gi Pfizer gi a ha aliago di a nakit a hanas in a chiche a quen de Pfizer, ha aliago, ainle, na kita mo da nasla, e a e di is e ha anato zni, to e is at a ha al eta, e do e na ha ba ho nasen. A koti de kwasen sa nas e ta da hinto na anteko, a belen yago, e sto a ze e sh de tosni, da da niniki, e do an de tosni, a quen denle. Nast a teen, a ninety days, a na a de enta is it na a tolni, a do di quadonal sauce a a mihil ishtan ee lai, a she is not na a na kit a teen the morgan na a job a na for deal ne, strutty is it in linea la ha eep tapet hata dan she does no a denta, I tos kitty, jo e is it in a hashin second hits easier in me, though is it na raj a jee in me. A kodo yen hit na has ne. Ado di um hajin hajin sago a di um is the a deslin linin hit on holiane, hanzago a bi racho ashi, a quiche is the in lini a kodo bacacho ba in it and a quanda art and a dan is the is in a dan lini don't hit not on it dan lini. Ash for the eight, a quot yard on his cheat on his ze up at that day's baldo, Nikitra and dash check on the cretan his ne. A cocodo, a shin, if he had none, he did need a le shady cotto at a bench toy, a cotto at Napwish, and a shin, and ne a trapachin, and a an and the dojoto, Nikizadi, a shish zadi, gay. Bahen sento hashin sago shido yego nashin tingo ote, to art and the behasin that a trahotesh ne head or the shnego do the wins and no ekoto, nan nishi hut ah, ah, satobe and nashwat jo aben so it ah ekoto, a trahotil ne ah nihamasan in hit chain, hin nalida dan le, what ayen that and tin. Shohej, a shachinish yajish a way is an old other than hit at no. Ado ala sa atape with her net let than hit the neen there. A cotti is a ish in a door is a ne cart and lini aji yeg or it's easier than a neen door. A big a honeel on John. Um, a slahan of needles, so the zenda behat out the a cotto here and he didn't need on len. He don't sa sa to put. Is it what all less is the Baholado less of the notes of that of the knee? Eh, he had Chicago should the net. Ado has net that are not sinning, he got a hair. Ah, she are near us, aren't on here or that don't he not in us land. Joe, he cut a jet on us go out, ah, he cut a nature though. Could he quite a bear his ani had that the net or he hair? Has she not not bear his ani in the knee between us? Haji no sae a ni aho wa de so tan de bini ye ho lot e yan le kinko tan tel wa eze el ingo ta eze ta ado o tan al tlo shi ta pa akha yin ajo aje e haji ne la ho wa de nan nishta ho lo to a a ni kwa ed ni an hi de ne ed de ne bel kha ho zoy nan nishi sa on za ha je bet an na ho liya O kosha di na nishin lini pa ata te ni cho hot a dan ti ish kes. A do a ni di de kos hot a nas ni hi. Ka shi ne la de nes tui sa ni tis ke chi ke ni hi ke dan lini. Ni hi ta bi ke ta has di na konda has do it a do le shi ke do shi de ne. Jo a ni hi ni ta ad e ya 
Sato e ti lo questo e se è in iesini sa o di niki chi niki z petata te spalon te kikoshi o ta ya at e to e shida o ko di ze pahazliki pa hieta nitsen o ko ani na ti no as tan ti de milia je o ko ne la e na han ni ti ze lini o ko ai ta e ya pe la shi ke te bi se pit at the miliage a conel la ek at chos in a conne as a il and dan lini he had a donne as a il and basna has ago ado ado anna and let din he as a il and a bitch in a dust here Jorajin sago a an nikodo nikka il yedo hilka a nature ado did the nebbaka hearts of Ajita in Nishija. Aja dot nhinda nishiha shino sa essential pro essential employees than hit ne under the division of human resources a ka at their team essential kandat ej nishti etanda and nata hito kaosh akut edo the shno oko ajan dat ej nish a ni aita pi ne tak adnez nan te zit dozago oho wat et stado sato pi na khado pe eta akhosiado ni hinago pe eta khosi jo e hot a an hin kha nasla adon adna nishte na tani da holla ni hido hajo na khanda lishit nasen ta akhid nasen hajo chi eta ti jashidi na kitamoj na asli adna nishiki na holya akonde the essential than of Lini a customer service ash conde beta aquatia. Haladin hit the end Lini o de Nahadneho. Jo aja be a cut or was the order not a dish kit on Yahadne. Nikito has jot the nussen, Ada has nay out a hidden jinisha. Ada ot a head a codina, nishin of Lini. Know your resources, what it need. Quieto, eto sata, the hola, toshik baza, toshik haneta, ado that on nine, hajon da, kato, hajon hit the nen lini pepper the hosne. Ado all were close to the public, ado all eight eight large sauce, anne, ni the dadil cut be a quiet pesh mahaneta nas sauce, but the kata ye, pesta hosne, hajo, ado, anna, and let thee. Ado di na nishin na sini is the workplace guidelines de sine. Ka e shi do o hwit ego chaz ango cha na tani do da i do yin na yik edil tki o. Ni hi aj e do sgo sio he kwa e di ho ho te di do il i da be do ne is do cha jo o sa dn lini jo e di ni hiin ch ke jik e do si dn ne. Sa do ya as e hiin jil ti o e do sa ho ni sda. A o o o chit na haji yil na do de na o chit na kaan ta chit na e do e do ta. A do di ni hi ze don hi chin ta ta des ba ni tra a na j chiko. Nda khe don hi la ta tra ta kis tan hi di ne. A ko di hong wang haz a gi do na nish haz a gi. E kha shin tsa ko ye nan hi ne s tra do pe na da na tkim. Na kha a chin na do ni tso ken hi na li kye. As Tweedo Sani dan Linda Hashi Asa do da East Santa the Queen is she, but Nahana ho enta. A she all ye and le nasty letter, and nasty on to your nasty a conte. To her job and ask you not to kinchik edo shed in there. D edo ah need a bashed at the need ed and eh, co o you go ye nan hint hint. Asa do ya at a hint a bell chit. Nde paho ta ni ta ko din le ke na ha ke de ban ta a stay in de ni he do ho ta an hi hui do a ta e ni zin jo o a ta zo di zin do e ta si zi do ya a ta e shi ke do shi de ne o e yu go be na an tkin a a ni a ko shi di na a ta a ta ta mo a zli di me sta be di ne Na ki is ki go ish la ka di di ho wa de ka sa ta do ho na sa sa ta ha ta A ko na sh nish de e di ka na ki is ki go ish la a ko ho ta as na na sh ta A ko di sh nek e sa na la ho la ne pa A ko di ne pa ho e di tli nik se ne Ko na ep e di on a ba ka e sa 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 
あ、どっちだかしら、ちょっとあけだ、ペンタスさ。あ、どっちだかしら、ちょっと、ね、いんだ、かほだ、あ、どうセンタイザー。ディセネタイザーとかじょうたんたんえげかべたんとかかきはよさたたほなじゃあえんてあどおおつきんとおてあどおぱぱはぐいんせんはなけすんねるたべんたちっぽいあどなんねしてあほなんなってさばあつすん